Dr. John here with Life Spa Ayurveda. I want to talk about morning sickness. This is something that the NIH has reported that affects 70 to 80 percent of pregnant women. It's a really big deal. And I want to talk about kind of the whole gamut of morning sickness and what you can do. I also wrote a pretty comprehensive article about, you know, pregnancy preparation from the Ayurvedic perspective. And that article on my website at lifespot.com and it's called The Ayurvedic Approach to Fertility, Pregnancy, and Postpartum Care. And it goes over three basic things. It talks about breathing, how important breathing is and going into pregnancy with proper breathing. It talks about if you had an issue with the fatigue and moodiness, you want to kind of solve that and resolve that the best we can before we go into pregnancy. We also talk about uh, digestive issues. Underlying digestive issues can, can you know, kind of become exacerbated, particularly with something like morning sickness, which causes nausea when you're actually pregnant. So those things I talk about in the first article. Also, everything you need to know about preparing for pregnancy. In this article, I want to talk about actual morning sickness and the things that you can actually do. I put together a really um, comprehensive list of all the Ayurvedic remedies, all the naturopathic remedies, and a lot of remedies that were recommended to my daughter from her doula and midwife when she was pregnant with our first grandchild. And our second one is on the way, which is kind of really cool. This is a problem that really is just, you know, um, a major concern. I've been treating this for many, many years, and I've always felt like if we could get the women prepared, get their digestion and their di diaphragm and everything working better when they, before they go into the pregnancy, the morning sickness issues will be uh, significantly less. So let's dig into this. If you're watching this on my website, uh, on, my, on my website at lifespot.com, please subscribe uh, to our newsletter. Uh, also, check out our Ayurvedic store on the way out. If you're watching this on YouTube or another channel, uh, please subscribe to our channel or follow us and like us if you like the content and want to get more. Okay, so what's interesting about um, morning sickness is it doesn't really affect cultures outside of the West. The Western cultures have significantly more morning sickness than folks in Africa, folks in Asia, the Eskimos have significantly less. India is the exception to that rule for whatever reason. Other risk factors for having a higher risk of morning sickness would be long-term use of birth control, migraine headaches. Now, migraine headaches are a vasodilation headache. They have to do with your body's vessels in your head, the brain glymphatic system vasodilating in an effort to move waste out. Now, the reason why the body is trying to get the waste out through the head is because it can't get it out through other channels, suggesting that there's some lymphatic concerns. Now, I've written many, many articles about the lymphatic system. It's a big deal in Ayurveda. I've written articles. I have a free ebook on the lymphatic system. But remember, the lymphatic system starts inside your digestive system. So any underlying weak link in your digestion, inability to digest certain food, food intolerances, allergies, food sensitivities, all that can set you up for a problem with morning sickness when you actually you know, become pregnant. Taking the food out of the diet is not a solution. It's a symptomatic removal program. So I take the wheat out of my diet and the dairy out of my diet. I feel good, but I didn't fix the reason why I couldn't eat the wheat and the dairy. Now, we could say, I say oh, the wheat's not the same as it was once was. Well, you can get really good wheat in America. You can get einkorn wheat and different types of you know, uh, uh, heritage wheat. And, um, but a lot of folks are still having digestive concerns regardless. So that's the kind of the key thing is to kind of troubleshoot that. And I've written so many articles about how to troubleshoot your digestion. My book, Eat Wheat, was all about really a digestive troubleshooting guide. I have a free ebook at lifespy.com, which is a free digestive troubleshooting guide. Lots of strategies there as well. What's also interesting is that if you're having a girl, you're 50% less likely to get morning sickness than if you're having a boy. So if you have really bad morning sickness, this is probably a good chance you're going to have a boy. Um, but that's another interesting uh, risk factor as well. From the Ayurvedic perspective, morning sickness is called by something called Udvarta, or upward moving digestion, where the digestion gets pushed up, the stomach gets pushed up against the diaphragm. And it causes the diaphragm not to fully contract and relax the way it should. 
Now your diaphragm is the number one pump for your entire lymphatic system. So if your diaphragm isn't working because your digestion is going up instead of down, then you're going to be way more prone to having complications with morning sickness when you get pregnant. And definitely during the latter part of pregnancy, it's going to get worse. A John Hopkins study showed that about 40 to 60 percent of women during and after their pregnancy get something called a hiatal hernia, where the stomach actually herniates through the diaphragm. And it can create digestive and indigestive concerns and breathing concerns for women years and years, decades even, after their pregnancy and their delivery. So if you're a woman out there and you've been thinking, ever since my babies, I've never been quite right, this may be the reason why, and I've written many articles about breathing and the diaphragm and pregnancy, I highly recommend that you tune into that because that may be something that can be easily treated. I treat that with so many of my patients and we have just great results resolving those old, we call upward digestive issues where the stomach is pushing against the diaphragm, which is a, a really important piece of the puzzle. When the baby is there, the baby can obviously take up space and it can push up against the diaphragm as well, causing us to breathe more shallow into a more fight or flight situation. And it can cause pressure on the diaphragm. Once again, causing the diaphragm and the diaphragm being the number one pump of your lymphatic system to become compromised. So there's so many dots that connect here. It's just so really beautiful, intriguing to kind of walk down this road and think about morning sixes and things that you can actually do. You know, the diaphragm, the stomach pushes against the diaphragm and diaphragm doesn't contract and relax as well. 91% of athletes were tested. They didn't have a diaphragm relaxing and contracting well. That diaphragm forces you to shallow breathe. When you shallow breathe, you're in breathing into the fight or flight receptors. Your body's now, your mind, nervous system is responding to life as more of a stress. And that leads us to the third Ayurvedic approach to morning sickness, which is unfulfilled desires. You know, in Ayurveda, it's a big talk and understanding about nesting, preparing your body, not just your body in the room and all that for the baby, but for you, the body, your mind, your, your sattva, um, really kind of de-stressing and putting all the stress aside and creating a nesting, de-stressing experience. So Ayurveda says unfulfilling desires. Yes, those cravings matter. We need to fulfill them. We need to look at our life and if our stress levels are eight or nine out of 10 going into pregnancy, we need to get down to a two or a three um, if you have on a scale of one to 10 and you really need to work on that. I read in that article, um, the Ayurvedic approach to fertility, pregnancy and postpartum care, um, I talk about nesting in a really big way. It's a really important piece of the puzzle um, for, for both in preparation for pregnancy, during pregnancy, and of course, after. So those are some of the things. You're breathing, making sure your digestion is tuned, tuned in, uh, making sure you don't have upward moving digestion, which would be signs of like burping, belching, heartburn, indigestion, all those got to go uh, either preferably before pregnancy or even during if needed. Because uh, that baby's going to take up space and it's going to push up on all the digestive organs and it's going to really create that upward moving digestive piece that can affect more than just your indigestion. It's your diaphragm, which is your lymphatic pump. And that's kind of the underlying pinning factor that uh, can link, is linked to the morning sickness. So at the end of the article, I put a list of all the remedies and I'll just give you a couple of sampling of some of them that are there, you know, things like small uh, meals during pregnancy, eat a little bit before bed can sometimes help, vitamin B6 or B complex has been shown to be very effective for pregnancy, ginger tea, either in a ginger tea or in capsules or even in those ginger candies are very good, sipping hot water is an old Ayurvedic remedy, sipping coconut water, sipping lemonade, all these have been shown to be very effective. In Ayurveda they talk about drinking warm milk with ginger and cardamom to help soothe the stomach and support morning sickness. There are things like uh, pregni, uh, they're called preggy pop drops, which have been shown to be very effective, and those are a commercial kind of a thing. There's fennel and anise tea, peppermint, dandelion, chamomile, lemon balm, red raspberry. They all work some of the time. There's, none of these work for everybody all the time, but they're good to know about. Um, those acupuncture works really well. Those C bands that you put on your wrist for the for the uh, meridian and you're on your wrist to protect you from sea sickness will also work for morning sickness. Uh, Wish Garden has a product called No Beta Belly, which is also listed. And there's a link there as well on the web website to get all this information. 
uh, obviously fresh air and loss of exercise. And then there is a medication you can get over the counter called Unisom, and that's something you need to do the research on. And so it could be a bit of a sedative. You want to make sure it's not just something that you not. Everything else is supernatural. This is not. This is an over-the-counter medication that you can look into. Anyway, I really hope that some of this information helps. The article is comprehensive. You can go there at lifespot.com, read the article, watch the video. Oh, this is the video. Um, and, uh, and hopefully help you prepare. And if you are having issues in pregnancy with your morning sickness, there's a list of things that you can do during pregnancy. That's the tricky part. When you're pregnant, there's limited things you can actually do or take. Um, that's why you want to do it up front as, we, as you prepare for your pregnancy. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Deere. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.